In June of this year, a company you may have heard of called Capcom might have accidentally spoiled their own game. See, there's this game called Monster Hunter Rise which received an expansion called Sunbreak. If you don't already know, Monster Hunter is a game all about hunting monsters. It's pretty complicated, I know. These boss fights are the main content of the game, and discovering new monsters to hunt and make neat shoes out of is part of why this game is so much fun to play. But that discovery part doesn't really happen in Sunbreak. Let me show you a graph. On the left is the number of monsters in Sunbreak as of release, and on the right we can see how many monsters Capcom revealed in trailers and promotional material. So sure, they revealed nearly every single monster in the game, but maybe that wasn't such a bad idea. To find out, let's talk about everyone's favorite way to discover twists in media that they're excited about. Spoilers. We've all been there, right? A new game or movie comes out and you spend every waking moment avoiding spoilers like the plague until you finally get the chance to experience the story for yourself. Getting spoiled on something that you were looking forward to experiencing for yourself just kinda sucks. It can take away a ton of weight from that moment when it actually happens in-game. You get there and it's kinda like, oh wow, this would've been really crazy if I didn't already see the thumbnail on some guy's YouTube video. It creates this awful dissonance where half of you wants to be excited about this revelatory moment in the story, while the other half is just disappointed that this isn't your first time seeing it. A bad spoiler can seriously harm a great story, I mean, that's why they're called spoilers. But maybe that title isn't totally accurate. Maybe spoilers don't actually ruin things. I mean, don't get me wrong, they're definitely bad in most situations, but I think if the conditions are right, and if they're executed properly, a spoiler can actually enhance the experience. 400 years ago, a little-known play called Romeo and Juliet dropped, and it was an instant classic. But if you read the first few lines, you'll quickly find something pretty surprising. You'll find that the end of the story is actually being spoiled. This is literally the end of the story. So why is this spoiler okay? It comes down to a few things. Let's start with context. Context gives purpose. Without context, it's extremely difficult to derive meaning from a situation. So for example, in a vacuum, the word subscribe means nothing. But with the context of a great video, the word is given a totally new meaning. But what does that look like in games? Well, if you've ever watched a trailer for a video game, you've likely been spoiled at least a little bit. But it probably doesn't feel like that at all. The reason for this is the total lack of context. For example, you can look at any trailer for just about any game, and despite showing you plenty of moments from later on in the game, none of them really ruin the experience because we don't have context for these moments being shown. So that's how you can get away with spoiling things without ruining the experience, but there's still the second part of why some spoilers are okay. And in fact, they're not just okay, they're actually pretty beneficial to the experience. Let's look at one of the most iconic spoilers in video game history. In Final Fantasy VII... Wait, are... Are there people who don't know this? Okay, just in case, quick warning, I'm gonna spoil a huge plot point of a game that's pushing 30. Now, if you know anything about Final Fantasy VII, you probably know that things don't pan out great for the resident flower girl. I knew this well before I played the game for the first time, but instead of being upset about this, I was actually excited to see just how something so world-changing could happen. It's because I was thinking about this in a how-could-this-happen sort of way that I was able to create the sense of anticipation for this moment. Each bit of foreshadowing meant so much more since I knew what was going to happen. Every moment, every cutscene with this character just had a different feel to it. And that's what really brings all of this together, your mindset. Of course, there are always going to be examples of spoilers that are just too big, spoilers that even without context will harm the experience. There will always be people who want to play a game totally blind, and there's nothing wrong with that. But the right spoilers, with no context, have the ability to dramatically change how you perceive a game. They can build up your expectations for a single moment or alter how you view each event. For example, if you know a character is gonna die, but you don't know how, then every moment that they're in even a bit of danger becomes far more tense. And game developers know this. Some games will even start at a future point, then flash back to the past. Fire Emblem Awakening kinda does this. In the very first cutscene of the game, the player character kills the main character before time flashes back to the past and your journey begins. This is kinda like the Romeo and Juliet spoiler. The game directly tells you that this world-changing event is going to happen, and this hook gets you to ask why this happened. So this takes us back to that question from the beginning. Is it a good thing that Capcom spoiled their own game? Well, yeah, it's great actually. 
See, while there was never that surprise of finding out a new monster was in the game, that surprise was replaced by a feeling of anticipation. It's one thing to wonder who's in the game, but it's a totally different feeling to know what lies ahead and excitedly push forwards in pursuit of it. But even in story-heavy games, spoilers aren't this evil thing that must be avoided at all costs. A spoiler is instead something that has the potential to change and even enhance an experience, because spoilers are actually just the destination, and it's how those spoilers happen, the journey, that's actually important. Now check out this video on what may be the single most important mechanic in video games.